How's it going? This is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey GUI short tutorial number 10. In this one we're going to sh I'm going to show you how to update your GUI with anything that you want it to in real time. So for example, if for whatever reason you have something that's constantly a state that's constantly changing or or some variable that's constantly changing and you want to display that information on your GUI in real time as the program is running, this is how you're going to go about doing that. So I'm going to do two, two examples of how we're going to do it. And the first one we're going to build off of what we had in the last one. So if you're not familiar, I'm not going to go over it because it'll take too much time to go over what we had. So if you want to know what we have here, you'll need to watch the first, the, I think it's eight and nine. Eight, everything that we have on the screen right now is covered in tutor, mini tutorial eight and nine. So we're just going to build off of what we have there to save time. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another control. And we're going to use another edit control. And I'm just going to use the basically it's going to be a, a clone of our last one. Except this time we're going to call this one edit two. Now I said this before with your when you're naming your variables, make sure you use names that make sense. For our, our purposes, this is fine, but if you have a lot of variables and you, you want them to be named something that makes sense so you can refer to them easily. Okay, so we have a second edit control and we'll have a look at that. So there we go. So in the last one, what we did was we took every time we type something in here, it popped up onto a tooltip. What we want to do instead this time is instead of it popping up into a tooltip, we're going to get it displayed in the second edit control. Now, obviously, this isn't really something that you're going to do in your own programs, but it does demonstrate how this works very easily. So I'm going to use that and then I'll do another example where we do something else. OK, so the first thing we need to do is I got rid of the tooltip. Instead of it being displayed on that tooltip, what I'm going to get it to do is display in that second edit control. So just like before, I said how not only is the not only is this variable getting loaded with anything that we type into it it's also basically like as if we named this control here it's basically like we named our edit box here this so it's it's kind of like it's its name is edit 1 and this one here it's kind of like its name is edit 2 so when we use this control this next command down here what we're going to do is we're going to use the name of the control to say that that's the control that we're trying to influence or do something with. So all we do here is we're going to type in GUI control and I'll go over there's a lot of things that we can do with this GUI control command but for this one we're just going to use the up, how we update a value in our GUI or rather how we update the displayed values on our GUI. Okay, so for the first parameter, we're going to leave it blank. So we're just going to add a second comma there. And now what we need is we need the name of the control that we're trying to use. So we're going to use this is the name of the control that we want to update. So we type that in here. Edit 2. And then we need another comma. Now we need to have what we're going to update into it. So what we're going to be putting into this edit is whatever we typed into our first edit. So we're going to use whatever gets stored in this edit one variable and we're going to display that in our edit two uh, edit box. So to do that I'm just going to put percentage marks around the name of the variable that I'm using which is edit one and that's it. Now instead of it popping up into a tooltip because we have that commented out it's going to display it in our new edit box. Now like I said, obviously this is ridiculous to have a program that does something like this, but this demonstrates how it works quite easily. So now as I type in in the first edit box, it'll update the second edit box with that information. Okay, so that's the first example. Let's have a look at 
we'll, we're going to use the same first example, but we're going to look at how another way we can do it. So let's say we don't want to update it with the value that's in edit one. We want to update it with some other value. So all we're going to do is we're going to create another variable. Now I'm going to call it var one. Now we are going to update it with the value, whatever we have in edit one, but let's pretend that it's not. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this var one and I'm going to say it equals whatever is in the edit one variable. So we're going to pretend that we're not actually using edit one. We're using some other variable and we're going to display that. So we're, instead of this edit one variable, we're going to do var one. All right. And once again, when we type, we get whatever we typed there. Okay. So that's it for that part. Now let's have a look at something else. So I'm going to get rid of this this edit control here and instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna create a text control so GUI add and the control we're gonna use is a text control we're gonna have it underneath our edit and yeah I think I think that'll be fine now I had mentioned I think I had mentioned when I did the, the first tutorial in this mini series that if you're going to be changing text you need to allocate space for it like you don't need to allocate space for it if you already know what it's going to be typed in it so for example all of this stuff here I don't need to allocate space for it but if for for whatever reason I'm going to be updating it later on I do need to allocate space for it so for us I'm going to allocate 200 pixels so now I don't have to worry about um, running out of space. And depending on how many how many characters I think that I'm going to have updating into this, then I'll, I'll give it more or less space. And you, as you play around with it, you'll you'll see like if you have a number that's ten digits long, but only eight of them are getting displayed, you'll know that you haven't allocated enough space. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to allocate some height because I don't remember if I need to do this, but I'm going to do it just because I don't remember and it's not going to make any difference. Okay, so there we go. Now what I need to do is I need to assign this a variable, just like with our edit one and our edit two, because in here I'm going to be, once again, I'm going to be using its name, the name of the control to say that I'm going to be updating it with whatever. So let's call this text one. Okay, and what we're going to update it with is we're going to create a loop inside of our, when we submit something, we're going to use this as a button. So forget about that we're typing anything into it. All we're going to really do is as soon as we type something into it, it's going to execute this label and it's going to kind of be act like a button instead of a, a normal text thing. All right, this is just to save time rather than creating another button and so on and so forth. I'm just being lazy here. So we're going to have it do a loop and inside of that outside of the loop we're going to create a variable called i. And we're going to have i let me get rid of some of this stuff so it's less cluttered. Our variable i we're going to set it to a value of 0 to begin with. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this line here copy it, delete that part and we're going to paste it into here. Now, what we, like I said, what we need to do is we're going to be updating this new variable. So, or rather, we're going to be updating that new control. So we're going to get rid of this here and change it with our new control that we're going to be updating. So we're going to be updating the text one control. And we're going to be updating it with the value that is stored in I, in the variable I. So it's going to come into here, it's going to start the loop, and it's going to update the text field with the value that's stored in i. And then immediately afterwards, we're going to take the variable i and we're going to add 1 to it. And then it's going to come back up to the top. It's going to display the value that's currently stored in i. And then it's going to add 1 to i again. And it's going to keep doing this over and over again. So what we should see is our text field here have a number that is constantly growing as the program runs. So I run. 
we can't see our, our text yet because there's nothing being displayed in it. But as soon as I do something here, so if I press, I think I think I can hit the space bar. So I'm going to hit the space bar, and that should create a text here that shows the number 0, then 1, then 2, and so on. It's going to happen really quickly. And there you go. Okay, so we can so if we have a counter or something like that, we want to have displayed on our GUI. This is how we can go about doing that. All right, I think that that's good enough for this one. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below. If you don't feel comfortable leaving public comments, you can always message me, and I'll get back to you when I can. All right, have a good day, and I'll see you on the next one.